Rodriguez Duplessis gets a warm welcome in South Africa after winning the UFC middleweight title. Following his split decision victory over Mark Andre Barrio this past weekend at UFC 297, Chris Curtis had some harsh words for Dominic Cruz. Dom was commentating at UFC 297 and said that it looked like Chris was sparring more so than fighting. Chris said, I get shit on by DC and Dominic Cruz every time I fight. No matter what's happening, DC was kinder than before, but Dominic Cruz is just like, it looks like he's sparring and blah, blah, blah. Bro, Barrio is a solid man. He's been knocked out once. I have been knocked out once. It's not going to be easy to knock the other down. It's just not. I hit him with some shit that I dropped people with and he just kind of looked at it. I elbowed him a few times, I went to move in, and he's just staring at me like he's back there. I hear Dominic Cruz say it's just like a sparring match, and then not to be a d but people are going to latch on to what the commentary says. And now I hear he didn't even fight hard. It was a low energy sparring match. Stand in front of me and let me hit you the same way. But because of Dominic Cruz's stupid fucking commentary, I get to hear it's a sparring match and low volume. Dominic Cruz, stand here, Dominic Cruz, and let me hit you the way I was hitting him and see if it's just sparring. No, we're two large, solid men. I promise you guys I was hitting him f***ing hard, and he was hitting me hard. I feel it since the fight. Cruz is like, it looks like sparring. I'm just like, oh my god, the narrative is glorious. So I'm proud of myself. I'm very proud of myself. Tom Aspinall reveals he's been receiving threatening messages over his recent John Jones callouts. Tom said, people on the internet are wild. You have to kind of see it for what it is. It's not real life. A lot of it comes from jealousy. People don't like to see other people do well. Unfortunately, that's the way of the world. With a lot of love comes a lot of hate as well. That's the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. I'm human, so it affects me sometimes, but I try to just turn a blind eye to it and just crack on. The internet is a strange place. I clicked on my message request by accident the other day, and people are sending me threats for wanting to fight John Jones, who's the best in the world, and it's madness. You just think, what the f is going on in your life that you want to say you want to kill somebody else because they want to fight? It's madness. Robert Whitaker explains why he does not think there should be an immediate rematch between Drikus Duplessis and Sean Strickland. It stalls the division for too long. I don't like rematches at all. Like, mm. I think you give rematches to, to dudes that have had like 12 defenses. Yeah. You know, and then they had like, like Nunez. <laughs> and then yeah. They have that shocking loss and you're like, what happened? Yeah. And then Run it back. she gets back because that, <laughs> yeah, that was her off night. It's good for the division. We've got a new champ now. We've got new yeah. options, new contenders, new challenges. Things mm -hmm. are moving again. It's, it's, it's good for the division. It's good for the division. You know, who could be next? Cheeto Vera is looking explosive ahead of his rematch against Sean O'Malley. The rematch goes down at UFC 299 on March 9th. Sean O'Malley and Tim Welsh give their takes on who they thought won between Sean Strickland and Drikus Duplessis. There's a lot of pissed off people. I mean, if you look at the punch count, Strickland did out punch him a lot. It's just, you never know what these judges are looking at when they score these takedowns. Drikus did take him down a few times, did zero damage when he took him down. Uh, but it just shows you, Drikus is a beast. He can push for five rounds. That specimen of a body yeah, can that's push weird. for five rounds. Weird. I, I, I mean, it was for me, it was 50 50. I wouldn't have complained either way. I thought, yeah, I, I, well, I, I saw I, going into the fifth round, I thought it was three to one DDP, but I could have seen it two to two. It looked like the, I don't know, it was so tricky, it's so hard to guess, but I thought could have went either way. You Daniel Cormier responds to John Jones's recent rant about him on X. So it started with DC labeling John as a bad employee to the UFC. John fired back saying, never let a quote unquote bad employee beat you up and take everything from you twice. 
It'll leave you bitter for a really long time, evidently. Here's what DC had to say in response on his YouTube channel. Never let a bad employee beat you up and take everything from you twice. It'll leave you bitter for a really long time, evidently. He hangs on to the negative thing. Even if he won both fights, it doesn't change what happened with the fight with Dan Henderson. It doesn't change the stuff that happened at UFC 200. It doesn't change all those reasons why Dana went off. It's that simple. I don't think for a second that Jones is actually taking the time to listen to what I'm saying, because why would he? I also said that while he did all those things, the UFC couldn't afford to get rid of him because he's too valuable. He's too important. Where was the response to that? There's probably a ton of guys that I fought over the course of my career that did steroids. I just didn't beat him. I couldn't beat him. Regardless of what he was doing, I couldn't beat him. That's my reality. And I'm okay with that. So there's no bitterness. He paid to do a job. But at the end of the day, it does not change that in those moments, he was a bad employee. John Anik expresses his frustration with the MMA community. Anik, on a recent episode of his podcast, said that he thought that Drikas Duplessis rightfully won versus Sean Strickland. He received a ton of backlash in the comment section and hints that he's debating on leaving the MMA space due to the disrespectful nature of the community. Because even if you and I both thought Drakus Duplessis won the fight, we try to present that information respectfully. And when I go on to X or I go to our YouTube comments, it seems like a lot of these fans are just in attack mode. And I don't know if these fans are casual fans or not, right? But I appreciate the passion, but I'm getting to a point at 45 years of age where I don't know how much time I have left in this MMA space because if I go do pro football, like I'm not necessarily gonna be dealing with this lowest common denominator all the time. And I don't know, man, I just feel like there's a lot of malice and disrespect from the fan base and we can disagree. Like, don't take it from me. Demetrius Johnson and Kenny Florian thought DDP won the fight. I don't know. I've just been very off put with the negativity that has permeated my feed since Saturday night. And I'm just not sure how much longer I have in this space, honestly. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Ethan Green 8831 says Chael must be high if he thinks Sean lost all five rounds. The second one's from AGI The Wayfarer, says how is having dinner an MMA headline? And the final one's from Wood 5831 says the fact that I see everyone is so split on the Sean versus Drikas fight just shows how it really could have been given to either fighter. Drikas winning doesn't bother me at all, but I am bothered that Sean isn't getting a rematch. Any fight that close needs to be an immediate rematch in my opinion, because there are still more questions than answers. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.